Cheers. Hey guys, this is Alan, and today's episode is going to be how to transplant a pomegranate tree. So this pomegranate right here has been in the ground for about, I think, three, three and a half years, maybe four, I don't really remember. It was one of the first trees that we ever put in the ground. Now, as you can see, this is my driveway right here, and um, I know the tree doesn't look as big right now, but last year we literally had to prune it four times just to keep it away from the driveway because it was sticking out like literally all the way half halfway through here. Um, so this tree right here is actually, actually it's way too big for this area. So we're gonna actually transplant it. Uh, we don't like killing plants, so it's not the tree's fault. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna dig it up and then we're gonna put it in the back where I have a lot more space for it. Now pomegranate trees are bushes. They are not trees, as you can tell right here. You see all the branching coming off uh, uh, the base of the plant? Well, that indicates the plant's a bush, and it wants to be a bush. Now, if you wanted a tree, you're gonna have to actually prune all that off and then keep a single or a, a double or triple trunk in there, but that's personal choice. Now, when transplanting trees, there are two main things, two rules you have to follow. The first one is, you need to understand when's the best time to transplant it. And the second one is, you're going to have to prune the tree back. How much? That depends on how big of a root ball you're actually able to dig out. But just as a general rule, it's gonna be about 25 to 50%. Now, when pruning the plant, um, you can either cut it back 25 to 50%, or you, you can do what I do, or, or what I'm gonna do with this one in particular. Instead of cutting it down, which is gonna be, make the tree even bushier than it is already, I'm just gonna thin it out. So I'm just gonna cut a lot of the branches, the smaller branches in there, I'm just gonna cut them off and keep a few of the uh, thicker branches so that way the tree actually gets taller. And that is, that is what I want in the back. I want a taller tree that's gonna give me a canopy so I can get some shade. I like pomegranates and they're all great, um, but I'm not too worried about the fruit. This is one of the easiest plants to grow in my area. And as long as you can dig a hole, you grab the tree and you throw it, and if it lands in the hole, it will grow. If you kill a pomegranate, that means you try really hard killing it. So, transplanting the tree, when is the best time to transplant it? That is going to be during the winter time. Pomegranate trees are the sieges trees. So that means they go dormant in the winter, and what are you gonna do? You're gonna wait until your tree drop all its leaves, and then you're gonna dig it up. Why is that important, guys? Well, when the trees go into dormancy, what happens is they, comp they slow down the energy consumption drastically. So I can literally dig this tree up, throw it out here in the middle of the sun, and it will stay alive for weeks and weeks, and probably take a very long time to die. And the reason for that is because, well, the tree is not growing, it's in the middle of the winter time, and that's the only reason why it can live for that long. So usually when transplanting trees, what you want to do is you dig them up and then you transplant it. So whatever shock that you actually get or the tree gets, you're not gonna see it right away. And you can make mistakes, you can do whatever you need to do. And it's a lot easier just to transplant it when the tree is dormant. Now you can do this during the growing season, but you have to keep in mind during the growing season, what's gonna happen is the tree is actively growing. So as soon as you chop the root system, that tree is gonna get shocked. And then especially if you don't shade it, if it's in the middle of the summer, 110, 120 degree direct sun, your tree may die. So to minimize death, we're just gonna do it in the middle of the winter time. Now, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do it in the middle of the summer, like I said, you're able to do it, but be very careful. Make sure you dig it up, and make sure you prune it back. I would probably shade it too, and don't let it go too dry because your tree has a lot higher chances of dying during the summer than it does during the winter time. But anyways, guys, so we're gonna dig it up, and then as you can see, we started digging the hole already. So when digging the tree up, what you want to do is you need to understand what type of root system your plant has. So pomegranate trees in general, they have a deep root system. Um, so they don't really have that many um, um, fibrous roots that go everywhere. They have thicker roots and they tend to go down, especially if they eat water as they get older. So all I gotta do with this guy is just go a little wider than the canopy and then dig down towards the main root system just like this. Think of it as an 
upside down comb. So you're gonna start wider and then you're gonna start digging in towards the metal. And you know, as you dig down, then you can just cut off the roots. Try to get as much as a root ball as possible. But like I said, pomegranate trees are very easy to transplant. So don't be too worried about it, especially if you're doing it during the winter time. Um, so let's go ahead and start digging this tree up and then I can show you guys the process. This is a wonderful right here. This one is a, an AC suite. And then I have another variety over there that I forgot what it is, but I'll tell you in a few minutes once I figure it out or find out what it is. Uh, but let me go ahead and start digging it up and then I can show you guys how we do this. Anyways guys, so as you can see, we got the root ball out and uh, we actually prune all the roots around the root ball and especially the thicker ones. Um, remember I told you earlier that they hardly have any fibrous roots. These are the roots that I'm talking about. These little roots right here. Pomegranate trees, you're really not gonna have that many uh, smaller roots. It's mainly gonna have the thicker roots and then they go straight down in the ground. Um, but anyways, so we got this out and then the next step, it's gonna be pruning it. So let me get my pruners right now and, uh, and start pruning it so you can see how I do my pomegranates. So. All right, so when pruning a tree, especially uh, when transplanting it, the main reason you do this is because the root system supporting this canopy is no longer there. Now, the tree is not gonna react to it right now. What's gonna happen is it will live, it will look fine until growing season. Once it starts waking up, that's when the tree is going to react to everything that you did to it during the winter time. So to minimize stress, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prune it back since this one has a really good root ball um, and pomegranates in general are not that sensitive so I'm just gonna prune back about 25% so you can either go uh, the height of the tree you can prune it back 25% or you can thin it out like I'm gonna do I want this pomegranate to be more of a tree than an actual bush and as you can see I have a lot of uh, branches on, on the lower um, um, part of the tree. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna prune back. I'm gonna thin it out about 25%. So I'm just gonna start cutting branches off. So. All right guys, as you can see, we got the trees in the back. We have the holes dug for the uh, new uh, pomegranate trees. And uh, when digging your holes, it's just like any other plant that you're gonna you know, plant in the ground. Make your holes bigger than the root ball. And uh, the main thing to check with any plant is check for drainage. So what I like to do is, I know exactly how long this hole drains the water. For me, it takes about 12 hours, but ideally you're looking for 24 hours or less. So you're gonna dig your holes, make sure they're bigger than the root balls. You're gonna fill up the holes with water all the way to the top, and you're gonna time it and you're gonna see how long it takes for the water to drain. 24 hours or less, it's what you're looking for. If the hole takes several days to drain the water, that is not good drainage. And then, depending on how bad the drainage is, you may have issues in the future. You won't have any problems at the beginning, but over the months, over the years, you may have uh, um, overwatering issues because the bottom of that hole will not drain the water as fast as the top. Uh, and that's the main reason why you want to actually check for drainage. After that, uh, depending on your soil, 
My soil is very rich in micronutrients, um, but it's not as rich in organic material. So what I like to do, I like to add some compost in there. But this area back here, my horse, uh, he hangs around this area and he poops everywhere. So I have natural fertilizer in the soil. So even though I have a lot of clay in my soil and it's not as, uh, as rich and black as the other areas in my yard, you know, it's good enough for this pomegranate, so I'm not really worried about it. But even if the soil has zero nutrients in it, after you plant your tree in the ground, you will not notice any difference for months and months on end, if not over a year. So don't get fixated on the um, amendments and stuff that you can put in the hole in there, because regardless of what you put in that hole, your tree will not grow any faster. The only thing that you can actually do is give your plant time to grow, establish itself in the ground, and um, and it will grow as fast as it needs to grow, uh, regardless of what you put in the soil. So keep that in mind. Now, even though this plant is about three and a half, four years old, we're restarting the clock now. So we transplanted it, and um, we're gonna put it over here, and that's resetting the clock. So it's gonna take easily in my area about a year for this plant to fully establish itself in the soil and grow roots into the soil. So for at least this season, this one, this year, this plant may not grow much on top. Uh, most of the flowers may drop. Uh, and even if the flowers get pollinated and they produce fruit, that fruit will drop a lot easier. And the reason for that is because the plant will be concentrating on growing roots in the soil. And um, until then, it will not be as strong to actually hold the fruit or produce fruit. Don't worry about it, it's fine, it's normal. This happens with most plants after you put them in the ground. So give your plant one year to grow roots in the soil and then you can go ahead and inspect anything out of your plant the following year. So the following year, once it's fully rooted in the ground, that's when you're gonna see a lot of growth and then fruit and all that good stuff. So for now, let's go ahead and plant it in the ground. So the first thing that I like to do is, I like to make my hole bigger than the root ball. So, this hole right here seems to be just big enough. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and dry fit it in there. So I'm gonna stick the plant in the hole. And then probably, I probably need to dig it a little deeper than that. So let me go ahead and fix that right now. I want the crown of the plant to be just slightly above the surface, maybe half an inch to an inch. Uh, on pomegranate plants, it's not as, uh, as uh, important as other plants because even if you bury the ground too deep into the soil, what's gonna happen with pomegranate plants is they're gonna grow roots out of there and then they're gonna create a new crown. So don't worry about it if you plant them too deep. Uh, you can't do that with all plants, but this one here, you can go ahead and do it, it's no big deal. Um, just like figs, they're gonna grow roots out of there. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and dig the hole a little deeper, all the way up to here, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and plant it into the ground. All right guys, so that seems about right. So um, the next thing to do is just to backfill it. You can see my hole, it's not that much bigger than the root ball. And uh, the main questions that I get asked all the time is how big of a hole do you need to dig? If you have drainage guys, if your soil drains the water, all you gotta do is dig the hole bigger than the root ball and you can go ahead and plant your tree in the ground. The only time that you actually have to dig a massive hole is if your soil lacks drainage. At that point, you gotta make up for that by digging a bigger hole. And normally, you don't wanna go wider, you wanna go deeper, you wanna break through whatever layer is actually preventing drainage. Now, let's say your soil doesn't drain the water as quickly. I'm gonna make another video in the future explaining how to fix drainage and how to check for drainage if you have uh, uh, more questions. Uh, but for now, I'm making my hole just bigger than the root ball because my soil drains the water within 12 hours or less and that's that's good drainage in my book. So this plant right here doesn't need a bigger hole. Um, so let me go ahead and then backfill it. So what I like to do is 
I like to do a layer at, at a time. So I put my tree in the hole and then uh, I make sure the canopy is facing whatever way I want it to face. Um, that's fine right there. And then my soil, you can see it's actually very loose because we just got rain yesterday. So, but I've been watering this area for a while now. So the soil has loosened up over the years. Um, so what I like to do, I just like to go around, dump some soil in there, just like that. And then I'm just gonna get in there with my hands and I'm gonna compact it down around the root ball. Uh, the reason you wanna compact your soil around the root ball is because, well, Next time you water, what's gonna happen is if you don't compact it down, the soil on the surface is gonna settle down because by you not compacting the soil, next time you water, the weight of the dirt on the top is gonna collapse down because of all the air gaps uh, around the root ball. So I don't want that to happen um, because I don't wanna come back over here and fix it. So I like to just get in there, take a few minutes, uh, and comp compact the soil as you're planting your tree in the ground. So you want to do a layer at a time, just a few inches, and then get some dirt in there and then compact the soil. If you got clumps like this, just break them apart with your hand and then dump it in there. So, all right, so that's, that layer is compact it down so I'm gonna go ahead and put another layer in there and then I do the same so I'll get around the root ball compact it down so let's say you have air gaps in there and you saw it collapses in the future because you didn't do this your plant's not going to die so don't panic just uh you know, go back in there after a few days and then make sure that your plant did not settle down where the crown is actually getting covered with dirt. So if that happens guys, at that point, you're gonna have to pick up the plant and then stuff dirt underneath it and bring it back up a little bit. But if you're doing a pomegranate, don't worry about it even if that happens. The plant is gonna grow roots around the crown anyway and uh, it's not gonna get choked out and die like some plants will. But even if that happens of any other plants, that process takes years and years to actually cause any damage to your plant. Look, I got worms. So that's a good sign that your soil is actually good. And, uh, but anyways, yeah, pomegranates, don't worry about it. Any other plant, you know, if you don't catch it in time, then the plant's gonna start rooting into the soil and then it's gonna make it harder for you to actually fix it. So that's one of the reasons why you wanna fix it early instead of waiting. But like I said, any problems, um, it's not gonna happen overnight. You're looking at months, if not years, before you notice any problems. If you actually bury the crown too deep with other plants, remember, pomegranates, no big deal. So, these guys are so easy to grow that, uh, you know, if you're worried about killing your plant, don't worry too much about it because if I can do it, so can you. When I first started, I didn't know anything, guys. I started from nothing. I learned everything I know from scratch, research, and you know, anybody can pick up a book and read. But what I like to do, I like to know how everything works because it makes it a lot easier for you to understand how to take care of it. And that's what I did. So, I've been growing pomegranates for a few years now. Um, and even when I don't really try, Oh look, I got a dead bird. So they got bones in there, so you just bury it in there. That's good for calcium. Eventually it'll break down and then it'll feed the soil. So um and that's it guys. 
this is the pomegranate. This is as easy as it gets. When people come in here asking what's one of the easiest plants to grow, this comes into mind. Um, like I said, if you can dig a hole, you throw the tree in there. If it lands in the hole, it will grow. Transplanting the tree is no big deal. You just want to thin it out a little bit. Cut back about 25 to 50 percent of the canopy. And then uh, remember, it's going to take about one year for this plant to root itself in, into the soil once again. For that time, you may not see much growth from top. If you do, great. If you don't, that's normal. Uh, if your fruit drops this year, that's fine. It's normal because the plant's not rooted in the ground. Now, how do you water this plant? Well, for one, your plant's asleep right now. If your plant's asleep, it's hardly drinking any water. So right now, you can see my soil is very moist because we had rain yesterday. So there's no reason to flood this whole area because the plant's not gonna drink the water anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. And then once the temperatures warm up and then I start to break a sweat when I go outside, then I know my plant is probably gonna be sweating too. So at that point, I'm gonna give it some water. But I, um, this plant's not actually gonna start sweating until it grows leaves. And that's not gonna happen until growing season. For us here in Arizona, that's gonna be March, April. So once this plant is full of leaves, at that point, I'm probably gonna start watering regularly. Now this plant naturally has a deep root system that goes straight down in the ground. That's not gonna happen for a few years again. So for now, I'm just gonna shallow water. So let's say it's, we're in the spring right now. So I'm gonna water this plant for a few minutes, make sure that the soil gets fully saturated. And then every day, I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna check the soil around. And what you can do, you can dig a hole close to the plant and check the walls of that hole and see how far down it takes to dry maybe about six inches or so and that is exactly how long you're gonna water for the first season or the first year because remember your plant's gonna take at least one year to grow roots into the soil now the second year around you can go ahead and start uh, deep watering so that means you're gonna get your water hose or your drippers you're gonna put them away from the actual trunk like over here and you're gonna water slowly, maybe for an hour, two, three hours, but then you won't have to water for a while. How long is a while? That depends on the temperatures, guys. And um, you're just gonna have to check your plant. But generally, just to give you an idea how often I was watering this plant last summer, I was probably watering it once a week. But every time that I did water, I watered the area for about six hours or so, because that's how long it took to fully saturate the area um, back in the front. Um, but yeah, so that's how long you're gonna be watering. Now let's talk about feeding your plant. Remember your plant's not eating right now, so there is no point in actually feeding your plant. So I usually don't put anything in here. Now if you really wanted to put anything in there, you can go ahead and put compost around and then top it off with topsoil so that compost doesn't dry out to kickstart the organic process in the soil if your soil doesn't have any organic material in it. But usually, you know, uh, what I do is a few inches of compost and then I put a few inches uh, um, of mulch on top to prevent evaporation so the uh, compost stays moist. And that's all I do for feeding and I do that maybe two, three times a year. No special fertilizers, no special anything. Plants are very simple, uh, don't overcomplicate it. When I first started, I did. And uh, right now, those plants that I've put in the ground don't look any better than the ones that I did, hardly any besides just compost and mulch. Anyways guys, this is how you transplant a pomegranate tree. And this technique will work on all pomegranate varieties. Uh, my recommendation is to wait until winter time, until the, you know, the tree is asleep, and then go ahead and uh, dig it up and transplant it. Pomegranate trees like full sun all day, even here in the desert. If you're planting in the shade, they don't grow that fast. Uh, so keep that in mind when transplanting them. If you have to do this during the growing season, I highly recommend to um, go online, you know, Craigslist, uh, Facebook, ask your friends and see if anybody wants a pomegranate tree. Um, a lot of people will come over to your, to your place and even help you dig it up. Uh, don't just throw it away, you know, it's not a tree's fault, you want to transplant it. Um, so don't kill it. Uh, and that's it guys, so if you have any questions, you know, comment below. And then if you like my videos and you'd like to see more in the future, go ahead and subscribe. And um, don't forget to like the video too. And I'll see you next time.